idea of climbing just the main mountain summits. It's a shortcut that's brought the hills within the grasp of thousands. But at the time the Reverend came up with this radical innovation, was the man himself falling ever deeper into obsession? Was the Reverend more interested in climbing the mountains or more interested in completing the list? The clue is in the mistake that Hugh Munro made at the very beginning. This is Munro's original list, the one that Robertson was using. And buried in here is the clue that I'm looking for. It's in section 17, if I can find it. The section dealing with, here it is, the Isle of Skye. Now look at this. Munro has listed a mountain called Skur Jarag as having a height of 3,234 feet. Furthermore, he's given it a number in the left-hand column, 157, which means he's treating it as a main mountain summit. Now, right beneath Skur Jarag, he's listed that mountain's immediate neighbor, the inaccessible peak, as having a height of 3,250 feet. In other words, the inaccessible peak is 16 feet higher than Skur Jarag, and yet Munro has demoted it to being a satellite peak of Skur Jarag, and you can tell that's the case because he hasn't given it a number in the left-hand column. So even though it's higher, the inaccessible peak has been demoted to the B list, where Skur Jarag has been unfairly promoted to a main mountain summit. Well, what's going on? Could it be a clerical error, perhaps? You could imagine Munro sitting up late at night, his mind falling apart with all these numbers and tables, and he simply gets the two summits the wrong way around. But this slip of the pen becomes very revealing. Because if Robertson wanted to be the first to reach the top of all Scotland's 3,000-foot mountains, he would climb the highest summit, the inaccessible peak. On the other hand, if he wanted to be the first to complete Munro's list, he would stick to what was published in black and white, Skur Jarag, even if it was wrong. So the big question is, which one did the Reverend climb? Well, I've never been up the inaccessible peak, so I'm heading for the Isle of Skye to take a closer look at this conundrum. For Munro baggers, the black cooling of Skye evokes either twitchy excitement or sweaty palmed terror. 13 kilometers of Razorback Ridge bounded by yawning precipices, interrupted by summits like the teeth of a saw. It's the stronghold of the most difficult Munro of them all. I'm so excited about this, Martin. I mean... And I can't think of anyone better qualified to take me up there than mountain guide Martin Moran. Well, we've got about two and a half hours of fairly steep uphill walking. Easy to begin with on a footpath. Then you're going to be scrambling up the front of the west ridge here. That one uh, there? Yep. And then it's an easy walk up the scree and then the final 20 minutes of scrambling. And you won't see the pinnacle until you actually get there. It's the only major mountain in Britain which you need to do a graded rock climb to reach the summit. And you definitely need a rope for it. Somewhere up there is the inaccessible peak. Nowadays, it's called the inaccessible pinnacle, nickname In Pin. Today, Martin's guiding me up there under a burning sun. But he's Scotland's foremost authority on climbing the Munros in winter. He successfully did all of them in a single winter season. Did you have any bad moments when you're doing your Munros in winter? The worst moment was when we got avalanched Kidding. on what was quite an innocuous hill, but um, a storm came in and we veered off our compass bearing and I walked onto a cornice and uh, the cornice collapsed and the worst thing was that my wife was right next to me, so she came down with me and when we hit the snow below, the slope uh, under us actually avalanched under our weight and so we were carried down in a very large avalanche for about 300 feet. And we were just lucky that we picked ourselves out and we were able to climb back up to the top. 
hidden behind these formidable defences is the inaccessible pinnacle. Despite being the highest point of the mountain, the in pin was mistakenly relegated to the status of mere satellite peak on Munro's list. Could Reverend Robertson have believed it was just a satellite peak when he came here? Would it have been obvious or difficult to tell? I've never been here in clear weather, and I'm itching to see what faced him. Wow, it's uh, a lot bigger than I remember, and an awful lot steeper. It looks rather unclimbable, Martin. Hence the name. Getting, uh, it's one of those moments where I knew one day I'd have to come and do this. And now that day has arrived. I'm feeling slightly anxious. God. I don't think you've got an excuse in this weather. There's no backing out now, but I'm not the only one here to fulfill my fever dreams on the inn pin. There's a queue. What do you feel about going up there? I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not a climber, so this is, uh, this is oh, a, bit really? of a bit of a rite of passage for me, going up one of these things. Well, me too as well. I've been uh, waiting a good part of my life to have a go at this. And is that right? Yeah. It's the big one, isn't it? It is, yes. I've been watching all these people going up slowly, some of them slow, some of them quick, and uh, yes, it does, uh, it's a long wait if you're, if you're wondering what's happening up there. I would quite like to get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Rope. Now, how many pitches is it, Martin? Two pitches. Uh, each pitch is about 30 metres of the rope, and we've got 50 metres of rope, which should be long enough. And what, um, what rock climbing grade is it? He asked anxiously. Moderate. Is that moderately which, horrible or moderate moderate? Which means it isn't easy, but it isn't difficult. <laughs> OK. So remember, Nick, it's all on footwork. If your footwork's good, the rest will follow. I first stood in this spot when I was a, a teenager. My dad brought me here one January. We were trying to climb a section of the Coolin Ridge and um, the weather was absolutely desperate. It was a whiteout. The whole pinnacle was covered in water ice and, and rhymed up and uh, it looked utterly, utterly terrifying. Um, and I've been back once or twice since, close to the bottom of it, but never, ever tried to go up. So this is a a really big moment in my life. It's the, um, it's rather haunted me that I the thought that I've not been up it. Quite a special moment. It looks fantastic from down here. It's just a needle poking straight into the sky. Okay, climb when you're ready. Climbing. This is what the Reverend Robertson would have had to climb to reach the highest point on the mountain. It's not until you get part way up, part way up that you realise that this is a rock pinnacle balanced on a ridge, so it's really a 3,000 foot high rock pinnacle with an awful lot of air underneath it. Okay. Now where? Uh, what do I need? Now how do I get up here? This looks like a rather interesting little move. And need a handhold. Oops, that'll do. Once you get your hands on the rock, it suddenly becomes fun. Wow. Hey, Nick, you're coming up to the hard move now. Move out right onto the, onto the arrest itself. Right. Let's collect myself a good hand hold. So you've got to make a high step up, and there's a spike about two foot further up. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, this is a bit tricky. Now, this might not be very elegant. But... That's it. You grab it. Got it. 